In this week's episode of my Working with Todoist, it's all about Todoist and Google Calendar and how to set it up right. Now, I've covered Todoist and Google Calendar a few times already, but I've been experimenting with this for over the last week or so because to me, there's a wonderful opportunity to get a fantastic view for when you're doing your daily planning at the end of the day. And one of the things that I come across is people are not doing their daily planning. Now, I mentioned in my Productivity Mastery course lesson last week about if you can't find 10 minutes at the end of the day to deal with the planning for the next day, then something is seriously wrong. But a lot of the reasons why we resist doing that planning is simply because it's too difficult. And so I was looking at how to make this process a lot easier, which is why I've looked again at Google Calendar and Todoist working together. And that's what I'm going to show you this week. Now, before we go any further, I would just like to say if you do get any value from this video, then please help me by clicking on that like button below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you want to get all the latest tips, tricks and news on using Todoist, then please subscribe to my channel. OK, let me now go into my Todoist and show you how I set up or would set up Google Calendar and Todoist together. OK, so the first thing you want to do is to set up the Google synchronization. Now, the thing is, you cannot do that from the desktop app. What you need to do is to do that from your web app. So I'm just going to go into my web app. Here it is. <laughs> I've got that pre set up for us. So we're going to settings. So this is going through Safari. I'm going to settings and go down to integrations. And what I need to do is I need to connect my Google Calendar. So when we do is we click connect. And it's going to ask you which account. So I'm going to do this from my demo account and I'm going to give it permission. Yes. And let's see what else I have to do. And I'm going to agree to the terms. OK. So once we've done that, what Todoist does is give you these options. Now, the first thing is pick a calendar. Now, you can choose a calendar. I can use work, lectures, TBC, blah, blah, blah. But I actually like to keep in a new calendar called Todoist because I want to have control over this. I want to be able to turn it on and turn it off. Now, the key here is to select a specific project. Now, hopefully you're all doing the time sector system. Now, even if you're not, you really is a good idea to actually pick a project. So I'm going to pick this week. Now, this is really important. This week is going to help me to reduce the number of tasks I see in my calendar. I'm going to make that 30 minutes, although it doesn't really make any difference. Should be synced as all day events. Yes, because I want to see these up at the top. And leave it on Google Calendar when a task is complete. Now, I want to remove it from the calendar. So that way, I, the list is getting lower and lower. So if I'm using my calendar as my go-to to see what I've got left to do today, it's removed from my calendar. So the list is disappearing. I don't use labels, so I'm going to get rid of that. And now I'm going to connect. So I'm connecting my <coughs> Google Calendar. It's all connected now. And now I can just close that out. So all this essentially is in my this week. So I should not have that many tasks now coming up in my this week uh, uh, on my Google Calendar. So let's go over to the Google Calendar. So you can see nothing's there at the moment. So I just need to refresh this. Hopefully it's all going to work. Um, there we go. It's all come in here. So I've got them up here. What I'm going to do is you can go into the calendars here and now I can change the color. I'm going to change this color to red because that's what Todoist is. And that's done. So I can hide the calendar. So what you've got here now is I've got these tasks up here on my day. I've got four more to show for today. I can actually expand this so I can see them all. So they're all here. And so as I'm going through the day, I can get my work done. Let's just go show you what I've got in for next week. You see, what I've got in for next week, these are my recurring areas of focus. So they're coming up. So the recurring areas of focus will always be there. But as you know, I set it so that if I complete a task, they will disappear. So what I can do is I can go in here 
and there's not a great deal I can actually do from this. It just sees it. I can't check it off. But what I can do is if I go, oops, I didn't want to do that. So let's go out there. If I go back to my to do list now, let's say I've taken the garbage out. That's great. Uh, I've taken Barney to the vet. That's a recurring one. <laughs> I, I don't know why that one's recurring. Get a quote for the car insurance. I'm going to do that. And let's see anything else. Let's say I've done my exercise for the today as well. So now those have been checked off. If I go over to my Google Calendar, I can just hit refresh. And you'll see that these now have disappeared. So as I go through the day, my tasks are getting lower and lower, which is nice because obviously as I reduce this size up here, it's gone. So this is why using the time sector system, and it really does work really well when you connect it to your Google Calendar. But the key is to connect this week. Now, just to address uh, a point that's raised over the last few weeks is you can't actually synchronize sections in Todoist and Google Calendar. That is something you can't do right now. But as you saw when I connected my calendar, if I connect this week, those are the tasks that are really important. I'm not interested with next week's tasks, but those are the ones that are important. And it does give me a good view on how things are. If I'm really working on my calendar only, I can go in, I can turn off Todoist, and I can actually just focus in on what my events are for the day. So when I'm doing my daily planning, I can turn on Todoist, I can see them, I can drop down menu here, I can make, expand that. So it's a really good place to do your planning, to see at a bird's eye view how many tasks and how many appointments you've got for the day. Okay, so hopefully that's cleared up a few of the questions I've had recently about Google Calendar and Todoist. You really don't want to be adding all your tasks into there because it's just going to become an overwhelming mess. So be selective on the, the actual uh, projects that you're using and it can be a very, very useful addition to your Todoist. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode and it just remains for me now to wish you all a very, very productive week. Hello, thank you very much for watching my videos. Now I have something exciting to tell you about. Recently I have developed a brand new time management system. It's a system designed to manage your time in the 21st century. The world has changed a lot over the last 20 years. In fact, it's actually changed a lot this year. And what we need now is a system, a time management system that is very easy to use, easy to maintain, so that you can spend more of your time doing the work. And that's what the time sector system is all about. It's going to change your whole belief system about way, the way a time management system should work because this focuses on when, when you are going to do the task. And let's be honest, it doesn't matter how motivated, inspired, or how urgent something is. If you don't have time to do it, it is never going to get done. And that's what this system is built around, getting your work done. So you can spend more of your time doing the things that you want to do. I hope you join me in this course. The full details of the course are in the show notes below. So please join me and thank you very much for watching this brief video.